Today we're going to rebuild the solar shed. So we have two LV2424s in parallel and they run at a nominal of 24 volts but I want to run it at 48 volts with a smaller battery pack because currently it's 14 kilowatt hours and that's just too much. It's complete overkill for the application. So we're going to make a smaller, more efficient system with 48 volt inverters instead. So first we're going to disconnect the solar input. Then we're going to disconnect the batteries from the inverters. Now the batteries are disconnected and I can safely disconnect the inverters. Now look at that. So the inverters are removed. Now we're going to slap some grow watts. These are so much easier to mount because they have little holes so you can put the screws on first. On the MPP you can't do that. Alright, so we have the second inverter installed, so we're going to hook up the AC conductors first and then the parallel communication cables and then the battery last. These are some pretty big inverters compared to the MPP though. These can produce 3000 watts each and we can put them in parallel with split phase for 6000 watts of output. So, pretty big system. So fast forward 6 hours later and I just found a bench to hold the batteries. I had to go all over town, so yeah, let's bring it in. Oh man. So this is where we're going to put four Battleborn batteries and then we could expand and put more batteries on the bottom level too. God damn it. Now we're connecting the batteries together but before I add power to these inverters we need to charge up the capacitors. So we're going to use a small resistor to do that as always. And the inverters just turned on. I actually need to turn them off so I can charge them up again because the moment I re remove this resistor, they'll deplete the power in the capacitors. So yeah, make sure they're off and now charge up the capacitors. And now the capacitors are charged up. See, there was no spark when I connected it. <laughs> I always anticipate that there will be one, so I always jump a little bit. I just got a shock from the 24 volts across these two terminals because my arms are sweaty. Now let's do the next terminal. And they actually work. So we have 120 volts over here, 120 volts over here, and at the panel we have 240 volts because of how I wired it. So here's L1, here's L2, and we have 239 volts. That's pretty much it. I just need to connect whatever loads I want. Actually, we need solar power. I totally forgot. These are the two solar power leads, so we're going to connect it to this inverter. Now we've got the negative connected. Before I connect the positive, I always check the polarity because you don't want to burn out the MPPT controller. And the polarity is correct, so we can plug this in. And we have solar power just turned on. Now we need to check if there's actually current in the solar input wires and at the batteries. So at the batteries, we have a higher voltage and it's at 2.9 amps, and at the batteries, we have 2.4 amps going in. So yeah, everything is charging properly. We need to program it so this stupid beeping noise is not here. And under option number 15, you can get rid of this annoying beeping noise. So disable it, press enter, and then it's gone. I always do that, that's like the first thing I do with all of these inverters. I'm just going to stick with the AGM sealed lead acid setting and yeah, these are good to go. I'll just let this charge all day. Now I need to rip this apart and get this out of here because I don't like this. It's flimsy and it flexed a lot. These are supposed to handle hundreds of pounds and this thing's just a piece of junk. It had good reviews online too. So yeah, we're going to take this out and put a work table in instead. So fast forward a whole week later and I finally organized the solar shed. I love these cheap fold up work tables and it's much stronger than those shelves that I had previously. So yeah, it looks pretty good now. And on the work table I have all of my main tools and I must say that this crimper, it's only $60 and I've used it every single day. I love this thing. It works so well. Also I made some wiring configuration changes. I got rid of the data cables because I don't want to put them in split phase. Because the last time I used my 240 volt receptacle was when I was charging up the Tesla for one of the videos. But I rarely do that. 
So these are gonna be separate output, but to the same panel, but for 120 volts each. Also, instead of the solar wires going to this inverter, we have it going over here. I also need to clean up these wires. The angles just look a little funny, and there's not enough slack in this conductor. And it's more organized, so yeah, I'm gonna stick to this. If I wanna add more batteries, I can connect it to the bus bar, and I'm good to go. So yeah, I like this. It's very expandable, easy to see everything, and we can still add another solar array to this inverter if I need more power. And right now, the Titan is actually powering the solar shed air conditioner, but it doesn't have enough power to leave it on all day. It's getting really hot out here in the desert and the sun has moved, so it's been very difficult to power the air conditioner. So we're gonna add another solar array right now. And my initial plan this morning was to make a very complex solar array, but this will work just fine. I just slapped it onto a box and then ran some low voltage landscaping line because the voltage is practically under 30 volts. So this will work fine. And the sun's been traveling over this direction because it's summer. So this will get a lot of sunshine this afternoon. And this is the solar array that is currently connected to the Titan. It's 600 watts with 110 volts. And it works really well. And I connected the new solar panel to this Anderson connector and we're just gonna plug it in. Now we have two solar arrays, but I don't have data logging on here, so I can't tell how many kilowatt hours have come through these wires. I might need to add a shunt to these just so I can actually see how much power I make with these every day. Right now with the 600 watt array, it's pulling 380 watts so that's pretty good and this wall and this battery are going to be dedicated to my new 24 volt test system so if I want to add expansion batteries to like the Titan I can do it with this example system or if I have 24 volt components that I want to test I can be able to hook it up right here in an instant so this will be a fun project but I'll do that in another update video and now that I've been using the Titan every day I kind of wish that it had an AC terminal block with little screw down terminals so that we could actually run some conductors from this out to an AC distribution panel. But yeah, I just don't like having all these cables everywhere. It's just kind of uh, a little messy. And I think that's all I wanna do for this video. Just a quick little update. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk to you soon. Bye.